Hello! So today I'm going to talk with you about how I've been using my XP Pen tablet to create a house illustration. For those who have not seen XP Pen tablets before, they are a graphical based tablet that you can see the screen on which you are drawing, as you can see in this example, and they attach to a laptop or computer or other external device. So they would not work just on their own without something else to plug them into. They need to plug into something that's doing the actual computing and drawing and all that other kind of stuff. But what you use the tablet for is to be able to use a stylus, that plastic thing in my hand, to interact with the touch sensitive screen of the tablet so that you can choose um, different tools to work with. So you can say that this is going to act like a pen now and I'm going to use black as the color and then you draw the black parts in and then you could say all right I want this tool to act more like a watercolor brush and I'm going to be painting with green and then when you move the stylus around it'll make more brush kinds of shapes and do it in the green, green color. So it's very flexible, it has all sorts of options in it and you're not using your fingers on it, you're using this stylus device and you are not actually drawing with ink coming out of that stylus. It's just a piece of plastic, but when it presses down onto the tablet, uh, the computer program is letting it uh, show images that it is in black or blue or all those other kinds of things. So let me know if you have questions about how the stylus part works and how the tablet works, and I can make separate videos on that. But for now, we'll just give it a given that this is how the XP Pen tablet works. You have a plastic stylus, you trace items on the screen, and then it makes pretty colors for you in the actual program. So to make a house, what I do is I start with a blank new page and I import in the picture of the house that I want to work with. So this is now on a bottom layer and I get that picture of the house all situated until it's at the right angle that I want and that sort of stuff. And then I make a new layer on top of that. And with this new layer, I choose the pen tool and I make it black and I make it a certain thickness. And with that pen tool, I start drawing in the lines for the outside structure of this house. So if you can see the little lines there, I know it's sort of hard to see against the dark photo background, but I am drawing in the black lines for all of the key edges. And since this is a recording from the software, you can't see my hand and the stylus in action. But if you remember that previous video, with me with my hand and the stylus moving around. That's what I'm doing. I'm sitting there drawing on the XP Pen screen and tracing around the lines that I see in this photo that I have on the XP Pen tablet. So it's a fairly straightforward process of me drawing the lines in. Now remember that these are on two separate layers. So we have the bottom photo layer and then the second layer where I'm drawing the lines. So if I want to, I can temporarily hide the bottom photo layer so that it's not visible. And that way I can see what lines I've done and which ones I still need to work on. So that's a very useful part of this process. Everything's on its own layer. You can work on the lines layer, you can work on the color layer and so on without worrying about um, causing problems for the other layers that you've done. So once I finish drawing in all of these bushes, then my initial drawing section will be done. So I'm just going back and forth between hiding the photo and not hiding the photo so I can see what I still need to do. So once I think I've gotten most of the basic shapes done, I can now make a second layer. Well, I suppose it's a third layer because the first layer had the photo. So what I've done here is I've hidden the photo layer so we're no longer looking at the photo of the house. And I've made the initial layer of drawing uh, partially faded. So that second layer, which was the first time that I did the drawing, I have now made at 50% visibility so that it is light gray and I've created an entirely new layer. This is layer three and I am drawing it again. Now why I'm doing it this way is because now I have the basic lines that I drew and the picture wasn't necessarily exactly square onto the house. And I like to do uh, square on illustrations. So now I'm trying to fix the height of the windows and the squareness of the windows and those kinds of things based on the initial illustration I did. So I'm honing the illustration. And you can see that I made a guideline, a completely vertical line from top to bottom over on the right. That's to try to help me fix the <laughs> chimney 
because the way the photo was taken, the chimney was a little um, askew because of you know perspective and all that other kind of stuff, the way that it was quite uh, not quite at a straight angle. So the guideline helps me make sure I get certain things that I care about to be straight. And now on this second version of the drawing, I can start to make adjustments to things to fix, like I said, windows that aren't quite even or roof lines that aren't quite even. So this is a honing process to have me work on the illustration and get it more towards the direction that I was hoping for. And on many of the house images, I would then do that a third time. I would make this second version of the house uh, light gray and then I would do a third version on top of it if I needed to further refine it. But in this particular case, I'm reasonably happy with how things are. I got a few things a little askew, so I'm going through and erasing the things that aren't quite straight and fixing those up so they're a little more straight and making little tweaks to things and erasing out the extra lines. So once I'm pretty sure that my black and white line drawing layer is reasonably good, then it's time to start on the painting layer. So what I will do is I will make an entirely new layer separate from all these other layers and I will choose the watercolor paintbrush tool and I will choose a color which in this case is a gray color and now I am painting in the gray areas. I don't like to use just a uh, block fill because that makes the entire house the exact same monochrome color and I like all of the shades that you get in here when you paint it in by hand and I suppose I also just like the painting process. I find it very soothing. So you get lots of little shade differences as you're doing this quote unquote watercolor painting with the watercolor brush tool and again this is a wholly separate layer so if I made a mistake in here somewhere I could erase that mistake and not have any effect at all on the ink pen layer which is sitting underneath it. And what I'll do at the very end is I'll put that ink layer all the way on top so it looks like the ink layer is a top layer. Just that's the way that I like to do things. If you put the ink layer as the bottom layer, unless you made some other adjustments to the system, then this watercolor stuff would cover up all of those ink marks and that's not the look that I'm going for. So it's also for that reason uh, good to put the ink layer on top if you're trying to do the kind of watercolor illustration style that I am aiming for. So this gets you all of the main house color in whatever color you've chosen. And I you know, do a switch back to the house to make sure things are looking the way that I am wanting them to look. Now I've got an additional layer and I'm putting in all of the shadow lines. So you can see I've got a slightly darker color of that blue gray and I'm adding in little lines where the light would be causing a shadow to fall. So underneath the window sills, underneath the roof line, and little lines to try to indicate the wood siding that's on the house to give it more of a textured feel to it. So once I finish up the shadows on this main layer, I switch to an even darker color and make yet another new layer and now I'm working on the indented part of the house. This is set in a little bit and I want to give it a darker color so it gives that visual sense of being a little further back from the rest of the surface of the house. I switch to yet another color to put in the uh, concrete or cement or whatever it is based on there. I switch to another color still with the watercolor tool to fill in the shrubberies. <laughs> as they would say in Monty Python, and get those items filled in. And all of these kinds of things will also have shadow layers. Well, first I'm going to work on the chimney with the different colors that I want in the chimney area and the side chimney. And put in a few little dots to represent the bricks of the chimney. Put in the door. I think you can get a sense of how this is all working now. So I'm using different layers in the system. I'm generally using the water brush tool to do the painting because I like the way the watercolor brush tool works. I am changing up the colors when I work on different sections of it. I'm putting in all of the windows now so that they glow with sort of a bluish glow light to them. And each of these tasks is being done on a different layer in the system. So if I have a problem on one of my layers, it's not going to impact all those other layers that I've worked on already. And that helps greatly 
when you're working on things, if you decide you've made a mistake, you can just easily erase it. And it only affects that one set of uh, area that you are working on. So I'm putting in some extra shadows on the concrete, a little grounding. It's good to have some ground underneath it to give that sense that it's settled into the ground. So I put on a green layer and then a medium layer and then a darker layer. So let me know if you have any questions about how this process works. I am happy to give more examples. Oh, and I suppose I should say that this video, for some reason, didn't have me putting in the little light spots in the windows. So after I finished this process, I went back and added little white spots in the bottom right of each window. Let me know if you have any questions.